Good morning, good morning. We're burning daylight. Let's take the Word of God and let's read from each one of the passages today that we find in our Live Dead Joy. What a blessing it is to be a part of the beginning of your week. I pray that it is an amazing week and let it begin right now as we read together. I go to Nehemiah and I begin reading with verse 30 of chapter 10 where we have the scripture saying, We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the peoples around us or take their daughters for our sons. When the neighboring peoples bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Every seventh year we will forgo working the land and will cancel all debts. We assume the responsibilities of carrying out the commands to give a third of a shekel each year for the service of the house of God, for the bread set on the table, and for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbaths, the new moon festivals, and appointed feasts. For the holy offerings, for the sin offerings, to make atonement for Israel, and for all the duties of the house of the Lord. We, the priests, the Levites, the people, have cast lots to determine which of each of our families is to bring to the house of God in, at set times each year a contribution of wood to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. We will assume responsibilities for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops and of every fruit tree. As it is written in the law, we will bring the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle and of the herds and of our flocks to the house of God to the priests ministering there. Moreover, we will bring to the storerooms of the house of God to the priests the first our ground meal, our grain, our offerings, and of the fruit of all our trees and of the new wine and oil. And we will bring a tithe of our crops to the Levites, and it is the Levites who collect the tithe in all the towns where we work. A priest descended from Aaron is to accompany the Levites when they receive the tithes, and the Levites are to bring a tenth of the tithes up to the house of our God. The people of Israel, including the Levites, are to bring their contributions of grain, new wine, and oil to the storerooms where the articles for the sanctuary are kept, and when the ministering of priests, where the ministering priests, the gatekeepers, and the singers stay. And I want you to hear this. We will not neglect the house of of our God. We will not neglect the house of our God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let us go to Psalm and let us give praise as David did and he says, I will extol you my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. O generation will one generation will commend your works to another, and they will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell the, of the power of your awesome works. Hallelujah. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all he has compassion on, all he has made. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, what a glorious portion of scripture to give praise and honor unto the Lord Jesus today as we arise on this Monday morning let us never forget that praise is due unto him hallelujah glory to the Lamb of God amen I want to read to us out of our gospel presentation in Luke hallelujah 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 I want to read where Peter asked the Lord are you telling this parable to us or to everyone the Lord answered who then is a faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time. It will be good for thy servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour when he is not aware and he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And for the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Let's take a couple more verses here. 
As we read in verse 49, I have come to bring fire on the earth on how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is complete. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you but division. I want you to recall those final few verses as we move into our devotion here in just a short while. I go to verse uh, Verse 7 of chapter 4 of 1 John. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God, and whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how great God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is the love that we Love not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atonement sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him, he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has in us or for us. Excuse me. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. If we love because he first loved us, if any, we love because he first loved us. I'll repeat that one more time so it will be clear. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Oh, how he loves you and me. Hallelujah. And his love in us, hallelujah, is seen as we uh, express that love unto others. We read together in our Live Dead Joy. The title of today's devotion is The Blessing of Curse. Let us begin. Scripture has an awe-inspiring holism concerning the character of God. It does not let us emphasize one aspect of his character to the detriment of the complementary attribute. It does not let us arrive at a zero-sum effect with mercy canceling out judgment and bless or blessing removing curse. Excuse me, or blessing removing cursing. Scripture pounds out the reality that the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies over all his work as we recall our reading in Psalm 145, 8 and 9. This is irrevocably true. <clears throat> just as, excuse me, just as it is also true that those who do not obey God will fall under his curse, his wrath. It is true that the servant who knows his master's will and does not prepare himself or do according to his will will be beaten with many stripes, as we read in 1247 of Luke. It is true, it is just as true that God will bless and reward the servant who does his will. The kindness that leads us to repentance is often the kindness of discipline and rebuke. Scripture insists on full revelation of the nature of God. Jesus came as Savior of the world. Yet, he said, I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it had already kindled. He came to bring peace to men of goodwill. Yet, he said, do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. We do God no favors by trying to reconcile these incredible realities. Their truth is heightened by their opposition. God manifested love by sending his only son as a propitiation uh, for our sins. 1 John 4, 10. The term propitiation means to appease. God's love expressed on the cross appeases God's wrath. May I read that again? God's love expressed on the cross appeases 
God's wrath. But God's anger and love are real. Or both God's anger and love are real. And they accent rather than neutralize each other. John tells us that if God so loved us by absorbing wrath, we ought also to love one another. We should love each other in the same wrath-absorbing manner that God has loved us. When, at a great cost, we absorb the negative results of the loved one's error, we love that person as Christ loved us. When we throw ourselves in front of a bus rather than throw a colleague or a friend under it, we are as he is in the world. When we absorb wrath for others, we know we abide in God and He in us because His Spirit is active in us. When we love one another in this costly way, God abides in us. The follower of Jesus is willing to suffer unjustly for others, to suffer that Muslims would know Jesus, that colleagues would not be ashamed, to cover the mistakes of others. This is the love of God we experience what it means to be cursed for others, and we take on the nature of God. I don't know about you today, but I feel like I have just received a word from the Lord, a challenge to me of what the true nature of love is that we receive and that we should then give out. I pray that today that each of us, as we abide in Him and He in us, we would have our love meter begin to increase as his love begins to swell inside of us. May the love of Jesus be overwhelming and saturating in your life and you allow that to be an outflow into other people's lives as well. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that this is the beginning of a new walk, a new journey for each of us as we learn to love one another as he first loved us. Again, this is Pastor Bobby. We are so thankful that you join us during the week on We're Burning Daylight. We'll see you tomorrow.